Are your Node.js projects getting messy and hard to manage? The secret to building scalable modular apps lies in object-oriented programming or OOP. In this video, we'll break down how to use classes in Node.js to structure your code like a pro. Hi, my name is Alex. I'm a senior software engineer with years of experience in JavaScript and Node.js. My goal is to help you become a confident and stress-free developer by increasing your skills and proficiency. Let's get started. In object-oriented programming, classes define reusable blueprints for objects which have their own data, state, and functions behavior. JavaScript got built-in class syntax in 2015 with ECMAScript 6 or ES6, making it easier to work with objects while still using its prototype-based system. While using classes in JavaScript, you have to understand that JavaScript is not a classical OOP language. Instead of using classes and inheritance, JavaScript's object inherit directly from other objects or prototypes. Therefore, JavaScript is a prototypical language. Classes syntax that was introduced by ECMAScript 6 is really a synthetic sugar on top of JavaScript's native prototypical system. Under the hood, it is implemented using constructor functions and attaching functions to object prototypes. When introducing class syntax, ECMAScript did the basic stuff. TypeScript has full support for that syntax and also adds features on top of it, like member visibility, abstract classes, generic classes, and a few others. So we are going to be using TypeScript to unlock the full power of classes. Okay, enough with the general info, let's dive in. I am in Node.js TypeScript project that we set up earlier. If you want to learn how to do it, please check out the Node project setup video. You can create a class declaration by using the class keyword followed by the class name and then curly braces pair block. Let's create a class car in index.ts file. This code creates a new class named car. You can then create a new instance of the car class by using the new keyword followed by the name of your class and then an empty parameter list. You can think of the class itself as a blueprint for creating objects with a given shape, while instances are the objects themselves created from this blueprint. When working with classes, most of the time you will need to create constructor function. A constructor is a method that runs every time a new instance of the class is created. This can be used to initialize values in the class. Let's add a constructor to the car class. This constructor will be called when a new instance of a car is created. Let's run npm run dev and we can see that constructor called message is logged out to the console. You can also pass parameters to the constructors like you would do with a normal function. Let's pass a make parameter to the car constructor. And we can see a message, constructor is called with Toyota. One of the most useful aspects of classes is their ability to hold data that is internal to each instance created from the class. This is done using properties. Constructors are used to initialize the properties. Let's make make parameter, no pun intended, into a property. We will need to declare it as a string at the top of the class and set it in the constructor. As you can see, we can access the property on the instance using dot notation. And this leads us to understanding visibility of properties in a class to determine where the data can be accessed. We are not going to dive deep into the visibility in this video. You just have to remember that the visibility can be public, private, and protected. If it is not specified, the visibility is public, like in our case. So with public visibility, anyone can access the property. With private visibility, only class itself can access the property. If you decide to expose a private property, you will need to create a getter. Protected properties can be accessed by the class itself and its children. Let's update the visibility of our make property to private. And as you can see, the TypeScript is complaining. Visibility is an added feature by TypeScript. In ECMAScript, class properties are public. Okay, moving on. Uh, but before we move on, if you are enjoying this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. So you don't have to set your properties in the constructor all the time. You can also set a default value for a property. For example, we can set a default value for production date. You can imagine that the constructor can take many parameters. Declaring each class property and assigning it in the constructor can be a little bit of work. Therefore, you can use a shortcut, set properties in the parameters of the constructor. 
Notice here we remove the declaration of make property and assignment in the constructor and included a visibility modifier public in the constructor. The visibility modifier must be included when setting parameter properties in the constructor and will not automatically default to public visibility. Besides the properties, we can also add functions to a class. In the class context, they are called methods. For example, a car can have a method drive. Usually, the methods will use class properties. That's what makes object-oriented programming so powerful, collocating related properties and methods together. And of course, you can pass other parameters and use them in class methods the same way you would do with a regular function. Another feature of a class is that it can be used as a type. Let's create a driver class with a method drive and pass it a car. In this method, we can call drive method on the car. TypeScript is complaining if we don't specify the type of a car passed to driver's drive method. We can use car class as a type. If we run our code, we can see a message that the Toyota car goes vroom vroom when the driver drives it. And this is how you create classes, assign properties, and um, you know, create class methods. Finally, before we wrap up, let's take a look at one more feature of classes, class methods as arrow functions. In JavaScript, the this value that represents a function's context can change depending on how uh, a function is called. This variability can sometimes be confusing in complex pieces of code. When working with a TypeScript, you can use special syntax when creating class methods to avoid this being bound to something else other than the class instance. Let's create a driver as a plain JavaScript object with name John and property drive to which we assign drive method of a car instance. Now, when we call driver drive in the console, we see undefined instead of Toyota because the context in which we call the drive method is not car context anymore and make is not accessible. To fix that, you can define drive as a narrow function. Now we can see the word Toyota again. It seems like class methods as arrow functions are the way to go, but it's not the case. Use them only when you need them. Arrow function methods are particularly useful for callback functions or when you need to ensure that this context remains bound to the class instance. In all other cases, use regular methods. Regular methods are added to the class prototype, meaning all instances share the same function definition. If you have a million instances, they will use only one function definition. Arrow function methods, however, are defined on each instance, creating a new function for every object. A million instances will be using a million function definition. That's not good for memory and for ghost advantage that class syntax gives us. Easily create JavaScript objects that can share the same function definitions. This covers the basics of classes and object-oriented programming in TypeScript. Besides collocating properties and methods together and being types, classes have other useful features such as interfaces and inheritance. If you would like to learn them, please check out this video next.